Music awards were not a picnic for all concerned, however, including Guns N' Roses guitarist Izzy Stradlin, who was punched in the face by Motley Crue vocalist Vince Neil, as Stradlin walked off stage with his manager Alan Nivens. This was apparently Neil's reaction to a 1988 incident at an L.A. rock club in which Stradlin allegedly assaulted Neil's wife Sharice, then had her ejected from a room at the club. So thanks for joining us, everybody, today, and we're doing another episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. This is an episode I've been meaning to do for a long time concerning the feud between Molly Crue singer Vince Neil and Axl Rose and Izzy Stradlin. But what's funny is several years prior, Guns N' Roses was opening for Molly Crue when they were promoting Appetite for Destruction. In fact, there's a rare clip on YouTube of Vince Neil and Axl Rose on stage together performing the ACDC song, Whole Lotta Rosie. I've linked to it down below if you guys want to check it out. But let's go to 1988, and this is kind of the event that set what was going to happen in the coming years. So there's different accounts of exactly what happened, as you guys will see in the interviews. But I guess Izzy Stradlin uh, got into it with Vince Neil's wife at the time. Uh, they were at the cat house, and I guess Vince Neil wasn't happy with the way Izzy treated his then wife at the time. So Axel and Izzy joined Tom Petty on stage to perform Free Fallen in Heartbreak Hotel, and it was only after they got off stage when all of the ruckus started. So in the following clip, you're going to see uh, the differing events of what happened at the Cat House in 1988, as well as some of the people, including Tom Petty and Sebastian Bach, who were at the 1989 MTV VMAs, and they talk about the, what happened from their perspective. The brawl between these two metal luminaries came way back in 1988 when Guns N' Roses' Izzy Stradlin allegedly assaulted Vince's female friend at a Hollywood club. We were at the Cat House. I was there with Sharice, who was Vince's girl at the time, and Izzy grabbed her breast. He kicked her in the stomach while she was pregnant. I was pissed. I said, next time I see the guy, I'm, I'm going to kick his ass. Fast forward to the 1989 VMAs, where Vince made good on his word. We're walking off the stage, and Vince Neil leaps up at the audience and hits Izzy right in the face. He made a move, and so I, I, I clocked him. And that was it. Face. Now, I think Izzy already had a black eye. I think it was all about some chick or, you know, some mud wrestler or something. The MTV Video Awards in 1989, after the show was over, I walked backstage, and there was this huge scene going on. I went up to Izzy. So now you touch my wife again, I'll kill you. And he's all, you, you, and I knocked him out. So Vince Neil wrote in his autobiography exactly what happened from his perspective. So he said that, so while the rest of Molly Crew departed the venue after their on-camera appearance, you, and I knocked him out. So Vince Neil wrote in his autobiography exactly what happened from his perspective. So he said that, so while the rest of Molly Crew departed the venue after their on-camera appearance, Neil waited around for Stradlin and Axel to finish the performance of Free Fallen with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers to have some words with Stradlin. He said, when Izzy walked off stage looking like a cross between Eric Stoltz and The Mask and Neil Young, I was waiting for him. Vince Neil wrote in his autobiography, The Dirt, you effin' hit my wife, so effin' what, responded Izzy. All the blood rushed into my fist and I decked him, I decked him good right in the face. He fell to the ground like a tipped cow. Neil's bodyguard grabbed him before they could do any further damage, but as they were making their way outside, Neil was confronted by Rose. Axel came snarling after us like an overdressed Doberman, Neil said. Come on, mother effer, I'm gonna f and kill you, he yelled at our backs. The situation was ultimately diffused and both singers went on their way. However, what shortly followed afterwards was that Axel and Vince started to get in their own feud. So Axel stood up for Izzy, and then Axel and Neil got into their own war, war of words. And there was even a lot of celebrities and musicians who commented on the feud and who they think would win a fight if Vince Neil and Axel actually got into the ring together. Axel was not happy with this, so Axel stood up for Izzy. I'm going to kick your ass, Vince, if I ever see you. And Vince going, you call it anywhere you want it, I'll do it. I can remember Vince Neil challenging Axel Rose to a fight on TV. Axel, if you're watching this, I want to challenge you to a fight. I'm going to give you the time, and I'm going to give you the place, and there's no backing out now, buddy. Even today, the debate rages on. Axel Rose, Vince Neil. Who would have kicked whose ass?
Sorry, Vince, but... Uh... <laughs> Axel would have whipped your ass, sorry. The rock world, and even the sporting world, is excited by the idea. I'd like to see the fight, though. <laughs> Can I get front row tickets? I'll ref. I don't know. Some. I'll be in the corner. I don't know. I want to be there. I like fights. That's my favorite sport. Really? Uh, I love it. Young people. Wow. <laughs> guys, guys. What is Don King doing? Vince Neal says, I've already killed Izzy en route to Axel. He said, that I'm ready for you, Axel, so let's don't get started with no jive. I want to see you in five, five rounds, I mean, two minutes apiece. We're going to take care of business. Axel Rose says he's not going to be taking that lightly. He did kill Izzy, but he sucker punched him without him knowing what was happening. He said, but you won't steal me because my eyes are going to be open. The odds makers had Axel a heavy favorite. His power and with his ability to send Vince up against the ropes will be just too much. I, I like Axel, TKO, early round. Axel would kick his ass, I think. I'm gonna watch you bleed! Yo, Vince, you better stay home, homie. So Axel ended up challenging Vince Neal by sending out at least six messages to fight at places like Tower Records in Los Angeles, or on the boardwalk of Venice Beach, but Axel never showed up. Meanwhile, Izzy called Vince Neil and apologized for his behavior. So in the summer of 1990, Guns N' Roses is trying to finish up their Use Your Illusion double albums, and Axel gives an interview to Kurt Loder on Famous Last Words, and the topic of Molly Crew comes up. Here's what he had to say. Have you, you patched up your, your differences with uh, Vince Neil and the boys? And he had a scuffle last year backstage at the... Oh, uh, no way. Did, no? Oh, okay. No way. I haven't patched up anything. The video backstage What's the dispute there? The um, well, I mean, they think... I've, I've read in the interviews of theirs that they feel that it's like I'm just, you know, standing up for Izzy and stuff, but Vince should be careful what golf courses he's mouthing off about Axel on and who he's playing golf with, you know? When he goes out playing golf and mouths off about Axel and he happens to be playing golf with people that work for me, yeah. stories come back. Um, you know, and... You know, he, he likes to put in magazines that he broke Izzy's nose or, you know, and how Alan Niven wasn't even there, my manager or anything like that, and no one was around. I don't know. We didn't want to take it to court because it would be too much trouble and too much hassle, but when, you know, Tom Petty's security crew wants to be witnesses in court, you know, or whatever, and it's like that, that Vince and I will get into it or something, you know, and, and Izzy just, Izzy laughs because he's like, that guy, you know, had a full-on free shot, yeah. you know, and hit like a powder puff, you know, and he was like, so it's like, it's it's pretty scary if the guy thinks about a real hassle, you know, I put in a magazine, you know, anytime he wants it anywhere, yeah. Atlantic City, I don't care, we'll put money on it, you know, I don't care, you know, and then he tried to turn it around and say the same thing, but, you know, the invitation's yeah. there, I'm easy to find, if you really want a hassle, you know, we can, we can have it out. So following that interview that Axel did with Kurt Loder on Famous Last Words in August of 1990, Vince Neil had his own response, and here's what he had to say to MTV. After mulling that over for, well, almost a year, Vince Neil, who's reportedly just separated from his wife Cherie, sat down with MTV News this week and issued this challenge. He said a lot of bad things about me the last few years, and, and a lot of threats, and even on... Uh, I remember one of uh, your guys' shows before the MTV Awards, and where he said, well, anytime, any place, and right now, I want to put an end to this, and what I want is, Axel, if you're watching this, I want to challenge you to a fight. I'm going to give you the time, and I'm going to give you the place, and there's no backing out now, buddy, and it's time to put up or shut up. I'd like to do it at an arena, uh, where people can come and see. I'd like to have it televised. I like, I want the whole world to see this fight. And uh, it's gonna be, it, 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 I think it'll be great. I just, I'm, I'm really psyched for it. Because I, I need to put an end to this, so there's no more, I mean, it'll end it once and for all, any bad blood between us. So let's do it. So it was reported that Vince wanted to do the fight on a Monday night fight night at the Great Western Forum in Los Angeles. Even Eddie Van Halen and Sammy Hagar from Van Halen said that they would put up the money to stage the fight in New York's Madison Square Garden. 
So fast forward to 2014 and Axl Rose is named the greatest singer of all time according to concert hotels. So they put together a chart comparing the ranges of the world's most well-known singers and Axel apparently had the biggest range of any other singers. He had an insane range of five octaves. So Vince Neil actually responded to this and then he quickly deleted his post on social media. So here's what Vince had to say. So on his official Facebook page, he's on Thursday, May 29th, 2014, he wrote, news just said Axel Rose is the greatest singer of all time, question mark, hashtag laugh out loud. He immediately deleted it afterwards without offering any explanation or further comment on the matter. Although he did talk a bit about Axel in 2009, he said a buddy of mine, presumably referring to Guns N' Roses legendary guitar player DJ Ashba, who also plays in 6AM with Molly Crew bassist six, uh, Nikki Six, said that they went, he went to go play guitar for Guns N' Roses. They rehearsed for three months and Axel never turned up. Rule number one, show up. He's been doing this for many years. Finally, I think the fans just went, F it, can't do this anymore. You can't be a fan when you can't see the band. He also added by saying, I heard one track off Chinese Democracy and it just disappeared off the radio. It was never talked about again. So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your comments in the section below and be sure to subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. Thanks for watching everybody and have yourself a good day.